Hey y'all, I Rick Sky here and welcome back to another Time Pieces for Tomorrow video. If you haven't subscribed, be sure to do so and ring that bell icon when you do and that'll notify you whenever I post another video. So within this video, I want to talk about two very popular wristwatch brands and uh, I own both and I like both, but I want to talk about the quality differences between a Breitling and a, and a Rolex. And the two references that I picked, they're, they're very similar. Uh, they're both dive watches with ceramic bezels. This is the Breitling Super Ocean Heritage 2 in 42 millimeter. You can see it's got a blue ceramic bezel. And then the Submariner, a lot of people call this the no date, but it's the Submariner. It's got a ceramic bezel, 114060. So to look at these two pieces side by side, one may say, oh, you know, those are, they're very, they're both very good quality. They look very similar and, you know, not even considering price of it, of either. What makes these different? Now, this is not what you're going to find when you go to an authorized dealer. You know, they're, they're not going to point out these differences, but we're just going to attack it in a very simplistic yet thorough fashion. So number one, when you look at the dial of these two, the Submariner's dial and the uh, Super Ocean Heritage 2, both very well executed. The markers you see have elevation to them. Now, on the Submariner, you've got white gold. The hands are white gold. The indices are white gold. The loom on the Submariner is radically superior, by the way. You know, the glow-in-the-dark luminescence, radically superior. I got a piece of dust on that, don't I? Yep, I just took it off. And the bezel on both of these, I can't really say there's a quality difference between the ceramic bezel, although I do want to point out the Submariner's bezel does have its, uh, the graduations are platinum. So you're getting, you know, even though this is not a precious metals piece, you're getting certain elements that are just higher end. I think, I don't know, comment below. Tell me what are the uh, what are the indices and the hands on the Super Ocean Heritage 2 made out of. One thing I do like, see that, that B, the B at the 12 o'clock position? It looks like that may be yellow gold. I'm not sure. But it looks like it. It adds a little bit of dimension to the dial. You know, Breitling's done a very good job executing their dial but when you look really close if you've got 4k when you look at the finishing of the hands on both of these pieces i mean rolex's finishing is just it's beyond incredible brightling is excellent i'm not saying it's not but when you closely inspect you're probably going to notice a a greater level of of uh precision when it comes to the finishing with the with the rolex so uh, we're going to talk about a few more things here. Now we're going to talk about the, you hold these pieces in your hands, what might one notice? So the first thing, I want to talk about the crown. So when you take this out, it's a screw down crown, just like the Submariner. When you pop this out, it's got a slight bit of wobble to it. And I don't mean that in a degrading way, but, you know, in comparison to the crown on the Submariner, you will probably notice that it just doesn't feel as firm in your hands. It still feels very good. It's still very, very high quality, but it doesn't have that feel of the Submariner. The bezel, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You know, just like the Submariner, and this is pretty interesting. See, there, it started here at 12 o'clock position. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. This is a 120 click bezel. So to go from 12 o'clock to 12 o'clock, it's 120 clicks. Now listen to that. The Submariner also has a 120 click bezel, but listen to the Submariner.
not only is it audibly different, but the the feel in your hands, and again, you've got to feel these pieces in your hands to appreciate it. Just the just the overall quality. You can feel when I do this, I can feel a little bit of I don't want to call it looseness, but I can feel a little bit of wobble. When I do the Submariner's bezel. I feel I do feel a minimal amount of wobble. Also, something you may not notice, look at this case. And this is scratched up, man. I've I've worn this in hot tubs. I've banged it into walls. I mean, I, I swim with it. I do everything with it. But just look at this case. It's like a, you know, they call this an oyster-style case. Very well executed. Just one, you know, simple, a singular piece. You look at the Breitling Super Ocean Heritage too. At quick inspection, you may not notice, but see this case? See right there? That's not a continuous piece, see? Whereas on the Submariner, you've got a case, and for lack of a better word, I would say it was just cut out of a slab. You know, so it's not, it's not a, uh, whereas these, what you call these pieces here, the lugs, the lugs appear as if they've been attached to the uh, circular case, if that makes sense. So this piece, this piece, this piece and this piece seem to have been attached to the to the case. Not saying that's a problem. Both of these have 300 meters, a thousand feet water resistance. If you're down that deep, you got problems, man. So you know, as far as swimming with either of these, I never have any problems. I mean, it's just a uh, <clears throat> you know, it's it's a reassuring feel to know that I've got stated a thousand feet of water resistance. Obviously, you know, make sure your timepiece is serviced and, and you don't have any rubber gaskets in the screw down crown that are degrading because that could be a problem. The Submariner I have is the Submariner. I opted to not have the date because if you get a Submariner date, you get that Cyclops, that thing that sticks up on the Sapphire. See, this doesn't have that, but it has a date at the six o'clock position, which I think is very well executed. The uh, bracelet on the Super Ocean Heritage 2, and by the way, if you get a Super, o Super Ocean Heritage 2, definitely get the shark mesh bracelet. You know, you could always add a rubber strap later if you wanted to, but definitely get the shark mesh bracelet. Another quality difference here, you can see obviously this clasp on the Super Ocean Heritage 2 does not have, it's got some adjustments, but it doesn't have micro adjustments, the glide lock, toolless adjustments like the uh, Submariner. Also, this clasp piece seems to be rather thin. The bracelet's rock solid. I love it. And even though you can see there's links here, those links kind of disguise themselves, see? I mean, if you push it a certain way, you can see where the links meet. But Breitling's done a really good job with their uh, bracelet. The comfort of this bracelet is exceptional. It's got a very good taper. But again, the clasp is not as good as the uh, as the Submariner's clasp. As you can see here, this has, see right in there, you can do this, and I'm not going to adjust it because it's like I want it. You can see all that soap scum in there because I swim with this. But uh, yeah, you can make micro adjustments. You can pop that out. Check out my how to use glide lock video, and I demonstrate that. But yeah, it's easy to make adjustments without tools. The inside of this is super smooth. You know, you you set, you, I mean, you really don't really notice it on your wrist. And again, the uh, oyster style bracelet, very smooth taper. Um, you know, obviously it's it's uh, very comfortable on your wrist. It doesn't grab my wrist hairs. So, you know, just a, a next level of quality when it comes to uh, finishing. And it's, I mean, it's, it's, uh, you know, with either of these pieces, it, it would be difficult to feel that you've made a poor decision. I think that either of these are great. And although both are exceptional quality, the Rolex is just exceptional in an even more fine-tuned way, in my opinion. It's not because of the brand on the dial. You know, like I said, you know, go to an authorized dealer, hold both of these timepieces in your hand, you know, feel that crown, feel that bezel action, feel that clasp inspect the case, see how the case is made. I mean, both of these are exceptionally well made, but just look at those subtle differences. Because, you know, if you're, 
here, here's the thing. Everybody has different, uh, everybody's at a different phase with their watch collecting journey. So, you know, some people are new buyers. If you're a new buyer, you could not, you wouldn't go wrong with either of these pieces. They're both exceptional. But, you know, as you become more well-versed with your watch, with your watch collecting knowledge, and by the way, subscribe to my channel, ring that bell, and that'll notify you whenever I post another video. But as you become more experienced, you start to notice the subtle things. And it's the subtle things that differentiate this piece, for example, from this piece. So, you know, the, the, uh, the details when it comes to wristwatches, the details are what is what matters. I mean, when you, let me show you the loom here. Let me put both of these in front of my studio lights and then I'm going to turn these lights out and, uh, and we're, we're going to experience the, uh, how this looks in the dark. Let me turn my overhead lights off. And I'm going to mute the audio because I'm going to say a device name that could interfere with your devices. Alexa, turn green screen off. So see, now you can see it's dark. Look at that. Actually, this Samariner, the 114060, which is not the current reference, it's the previous reference, but you can see it's kind of a bluish. And this is where you can really see the difference between blue, blue loom and green loom. The Breitling, of course, has the green. But look at how small the little illuminated pips are on the Breitling versus the Submariner. The Submariner wins when it comes to uh, when it comes to loom, the ability to see everything in the dark. And I wanted to mention too the loom on the uh, Breitling. It the brightness fades away more quickly than the loom on the Submariner. So you know something else to consider. Now I do have some other pieces uh, that I'll be reviewing and have reviewed that have loom that grossly trumps the loom of both of these. So you can already see, even in this video, the Breitling's loom is starting to diminish. Not saying that's a bad thing for either of these pieces. Both of these pieces are exceptional. But, you know, from a from a tool watch perspective, obviously the Submariner wins. I mean, it's, look at how bright that is. And even this, which is probably the brightest it'll be because I just exposed it to light, even that, you know, fully illuminated as much as it can just because of the styling it's not as pronounced as the loom on the Submariner so just a few things to consider hey if you haven't subscribed to my channel please do so uh, youtube.com forward slash irix guy and check out my time pieces for tomorrow video playlist and you can go to timepiecesfortomorrow.com and you can check out all my other videos and I've got live shows as well uh, if you're in the wristwatch industry and you have time pieces that you would like me to talk about, send me a message. I'll be more than happy to, uh, to check that out. You know, I like to research things and film a lot of videos. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you found it educational, entertaining, maybe a combination of both. Comment below and tell me what you think. And be sure to uh, hit that like button if you like this. Subscribe to my channel and ring that bell icon. Thanks for your viewership and stay tuned for more wristwatch videos here soon. Y'all have a good day. Hey y'all, Captain Irix Guy here. I hope y'all enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to subscribe. It's youtube.com forward slash Irix Guy. And ring that bell icon when you do to be notified whenever I post another video. Thanks for your viewership and y'all have a good day.